Hi and welcome. During this tutorial, you will learn how to create a logically structured navigation for your UI, so that when your player presses down or right, the correct next entry is being selected. This is not hard at all, and almost all we need is built into Unity itself. You don't need this exact UI layout, of course. If you already have created a UI, you can work along on that. But this is going to be my setup. I have a main menu on the left, and when I press the Options button, the Options window will open up. While the main menu had a vertical structure, the top bar is horizontal in this case. Instead of a Save and Back button, I will be using this first button at the top. While I generally prefer clearly labeled buttons, in this tutorial case, it will make showcasing functionality a bit easier. While the user is inside the Options menu, I don't want them to head back over into the main menu accidentally. They should be constrained to only the two submenus and back button. This tutorial only focuses on the UI navigation part. All the animations you see come from previous tutorials. All the UI elements I show have their own respective tutorials on my channel as well. This is all set dressing and won't be needed to follow along. Let's start with the main menu. It's just three buttons. I trust you know how to create those. And when I press down or S on my keyboard, or any other direction really, absolutely nothing happens. This is because we haven't told Unity what our initially selected element is, from where any kind of navigation would start from. Whenever you create your first canvas to place UI on, you also create a game object called Event System. It comes with two parts, the Event System itself and the Input System. Your Input System might look a little different from mine, in case you are not using the new Input System. Generally, it will give you a warning and a button to click if you need to do anything about this, otherwise we will just ignore it. More interesting is the Event System First Selected box. It defaults to None. When my player is in the main menu, I want Start to be selected instead, so I drag the Start button into this field. You can access this field by script as well, just use EventSystem.FirstSelectedGameObject. Start play mode again and test. I can now use keyboard and gamepad to navigate up and down on my menu. I really like when menus circle around, meaning I can just click up while on start and reach quit, and vice versa. This is where the navigation setting you can find on every interactable UI element comes into play. It is defaulting to automatic which means it will guess which object to jump to when it notices the direction input and typically picks the closest available as its next target. Click on Visualize and you can see how this works. If your background is light like mine, the arrows Unity provides might be a bit hard to see. I will darken my background for that reason and restore it to its original color once I'm happy with the navigation results at a later point. I hate the word arrow and I need it a bunch now. We can see there is no arrow looping around to the top or bottom, which is why our navigation is stuck in each direction. Let's change that. Click on your first menu entry and click on the drop down box. We get quite a few options already, each making sense for its respective case, I'm sure. But generally, I stick to either automatic or the one we want to use, explicit. If you click on it, nothing will happen, which feels like a UI oversight on Unity's side to me. Instead, choose None first, then select Explicit, and you will get a list of possibilities offered to you. If you look closely enough, you can see the arrows for automatic UI navigation are gone now. My first entry will be my down one, to reach the Options button once again. I do not need any navigation on left or right, and thus these boxes can stay as they came. On up, I want to navigate to the bottom of the UI, so I drag the Quit button into the field. The red arrow base will jump out at the top of your button and free fall all the way down to the bottom of your Quit button. This is where you can see how the navigation system works if not everything is clearly set in a clearly defined layout. If I drag my Start button away from the list, you can see the arrows not being straight lines anymore, but turning into Bezier curves. And at some point, there will be new yellow lines showing up, leading to start. 
This is because quit and options are still set to automatic navigation and guess your player might want to reach the start button by tapping right. Seriously, I really like the system and the visualizations. They are so helpful. I return my button to the strict layout and repeat the process for the quit button, just that this time I want to jump to start when pressing down. Click play and give it a try yourself. If your menu is straightforward like this, there should be no surprises happening at this point. If your menu is a bit more complex like my options menu, you might run into some unintended edge cases. I navigate to my options and the initial menu defaults to graphic settings. If I highlight graphics and press down, I expect the selection to jump to my resolution dropdown, but it highlights the quality instead. Going from there, down will bring me down to VSync, up back to the quality, but if I press up again, it completely ignores my dropdowns once more. My audio tab is equally nonsensical in its navigational structure. Let's show the visualizations once more. I would love for these arrows to be less infuriatingly thin, one pixel hardly shows up on my screen. So here's a drawn over version to make it easier to see. And this is pure chaos. <laughs> and what happens if you trust automatic navigation? If a system guesses, it can guess wrong after all. It struggles with figuring out elements in child objects and nested objects a lot and can overlook them easily. So let's start cleaning this up. The first thing is that we do not want to jump between main menu and options menu just by pressing a direction. Only if we press the options button, the corresponding menu should open and our selection jump to its initial position. That will require a few lines of code we will tackle in a moment. For now, simply set the navigation to either vertical, which will save you a bit of time, or explicit, in which case you will need to manually set up top and bottom again. Our back to menu button is ideally suited to be set to explicit navigation. Horizontal would have us jump back to main menu and automatic would furthermore lead to the player being able to jump back into the settings themselves. Again, that's a thing I don't want to offer. Graphics and audio will be set to custom as well. Horizontal would be too limiting, automatic too unreliable. From here, you will need to go through each element in your menu's sub hierarchy and change its navigation in a way that makes sense to your setup. It really pays off to have a good structure at this point. Because everything would try to jump to the back button and I only want to reach that one from the top menu, explicit will make the most sense in my setup. I will repeat these steps for my second settings list for audio as well, of course. And if you enjoyed the tutorial so far, please give it a like and click subscribe if you haven't already. Since I can't test jumping from main menu to options menu currently, I set up my graphics button as the default first selected element in my event system and test my navigation in play mode. If everything looks and behaves as expected, I recolor my menu background to something less jarring and we can jump to the last part. Writing a few lines of code to use when the navigation needs to automatically jump to a certain place. Use cases are for example menus like the one in this tutorial or pop-up modal windows in your game where the player suddenly needs to make decisions. My script is called sets UI element to select on interaction which hopefully should be as descriptive as it needs to be. It needs two references. One to the scene's event system and one to the game object we want to select for which we can use the selectable class. That's the one every interactive UI element in Unity inherits from and will make sure we won't accidentally drag something in we can't interact with. Because we are ignoring the core navigation system in this approach, we will not be getting any of those handy navigation errors from here on forward, which is why I propose using a substitute. We will check if we want to visualize the jump from this object to the one to select and we need to set a color. I'll be defaulting to cyan as that's rather readable. We draw the line connecting both elements in onDraw gizmos like this. We check if we want to show the visualization first, then check if we actually have an element to select. If both checks pass, we set the line's color to whatever we chose to pick for it and draw a line from the origin object to the element to select. 
that's by far not as pretty as having curved lines and arrows, but it gets the job reasonably done well for just a handful lines of code and hopefully will only need to be used during the initial setup anyway. No reason to power ages into this. Reset gets called one time when the script is being attached to a game object inside the editor, which is why I'm perfectly fine with having it search for the event system for me. In case it won't find it, you might potentially have removed it from a scene. You can get it back by right-clicking on your hierarchy, UI, event system. Check to make sure your element has found it with the debug log statement. Giving it the context will give you the ability to click on it in your console and it will highlight the offending item in your hierarchy. Jump to element will do exactly what it says. Check once more first, then set the event system selected game object to the game object or element to select is sitting on. <laughs> Back inside the editor, add your script to the element you interact with and add the method to the list. In my system, that's the options button leading to the settings menu graphics button and the back button leading to start. Give it a test and play mode to check if it is working as intended. And one last thing, we currently run into an issue if we navigate, but for some reason lose our selection, for example by clicking somewhere. For this, we should make sure deselecting is basically impossible. The code for that is simple enough. A new class is tasked with keeping track. It needs a reference to the event system and needs to store another for the last selected element. In reset, we fill our references automatically. In update, because as far as I know, there is no event we could listen to for this, we look for two scenarios. We have a currently selected object and it is a different one to the already stored one. In that case, we store it. If we do not currently have a selected object and our last selection is not null, we set it to the last selected one. Create a new game object, attach this script and give your navigation another try. I'm clicking wildly around on my screen and the selection stays where it is. And that's all there is to it. Again, all you've seen in here has been covered in other tutorials of mine before. I recommend watching my squash and stretch video for the button animation or the UI animations tutorial next. Hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. Have a great week!